and Hey, kids, do you like professional wrestling? Well, we like professional wrestling, too. This week in the news, WWE expands its minor leagues in the lazy river of wrestling criticism, ice-cold takes on Halloween Havoc and Crown Jewel, and Invader Club this week, the Brain Busters versus the Rockers from Madison Square Garden in January 1989. I am Jeff Hawkins. He is Chris Novembrino. On the first Saturday of November, the laziest of all lazy Saturdays, I think, for everybody involved. Like, it literally involved me getting up out of bed, grabbing a blanket, heading to a couch, turning on a TV, and laying back down. (laughs) Uh, I'm breathing just a massive sigh of relief that October is over. Seeing the calendar roll over, I'm like, yes, it's finally done. October was a very long month. It was a good month, but I'm very sore. I'm very tired. and, and, And... I, I am just sleeping like like an absolute stone eight hours right now, like just going down and I'm out and then I'm back up and doing stuff and then I'm down and I'm out. It's good. It's good sleep. It's deep sleep. It's finally uh, stopped being 90 degrees in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> so it's cooling nice off too. too. Like today I, I had a little, I had some needed free time. And I uh, curled into the bed under the heated blanket, and uh, yeah, at a low setting during the middle of the day, it's like perfect for a nap. Yeah, slept through our time. <laughs> you know. Well, I mean, after after last week, where I found out that my nearly a decade of doing broadcast on a public facing. Fairly well-known podcasting network as the <laughs> second longest podcast on the uh, network here <laughs> amounted to a hill of beans. Yes. <laughs> Look. I, I actually Look. have decided that the naps are a little bit more important. It's not that I won't do the show, but I, boy, boy, I'm not going to break my Chris, back for this show. Chris, I've decided we just need to be Dave LaGreca and, uh, and Bully Ray. And that, that's what'll get us there, just screaming and being obnoxious. And <laughs> and we'll get an NXT gig like that, just like them. Oh boy, Dave LaGreca has some real on-screen chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nobody's taking giant heads of us to arenas. Um, <laughs> no, God. no, but boy, but boy, he was just dynamic on the microphone, uh, interacting with, uh, who was it? Uh, Who's he playing off of? I can't remember right now. Halloween Havoc was so long ago. Yeah. It wasn't Sam Roberts, was it? No. No. No, it was mid-show, and, and they just had absolutely no chemistry whatsoever. It was yeah. a wrestler. Oh, okay. Uh, well, starting with the news, uh, Chris, I'm gonna while you listen to this, I want you to guess the criticism from, from uh, fan bases. WWE today announced the launch of a... Well, not today, but this is a story I'm reading. WWE announced the launch of a first-of-its-kind developmental program designed to provide up-and-coming independent wrestlers a pathway to a potential career in WWE. The program will be called WWE ID, short for WWE Independent Development. Under the program, WWE will provide prominent independent wrestling schools with a WWE... ID official designation with the goal of providing new trainees and existing talent at these select institutions with enhanced developmental opportunities. Those institutions so far, Booker T's reality of wrestling, Cody Rhodes's nightmare factory, Seth Rollins's black and brave Academy elite pro wrestling training center out of Concord, New Hampshire and Knox pro Academy here in Los Angeles, which is Rikishi's school. These are the first programs to earn the official designation. Additionally, WWID will identify top independent wrestling prospects with an official WWE prospect designation and support their developmental journey by providing financial opportunity and assisting with training, mentorship, and development, including access to world-class facilities, best in-class ring training, athletic trainers, and more. WWID will give fans the opportunity to follow the paths of these standout prospects on the independent wrestling scene through curated behind-the-scenes content, as well as highlights and matches showcased across WWE's social platforms. Sounds like a good thing for independent wrestlers. I mean, I think it's certainly going to be a problem for AEW's talent pool as WWE is now essentially putting a little positional bet on people early on, and Tony Khan doesn't really have something for that, you know? Like, like this is a small 
like little chip, like playing a craps table uh, and just making sure you've got a little bit of money on these different prospects. It's a pass line bet. Yeah. Um, yeah. The cries of woe, especially from people who were like, well, you know, WWE NXT UK killed the independence in Britain by, and I'm just like, are you kidding me? Half the people that were on, or actually most of the people that got any sort of play on NXT UK are still working in major companies right now. Gallus, Pretty Deadly, Tony Storm, Lyra Valkyria, uh, you know, Gallus <laughs> is still working out there. Uh, Pete Dunn, Noam Dar. Well, and like, uh, by the way, it's like, what do you think? These guys are all going to still be working the same British Indies 10 years from now? Yeah, like the they were point, gonna the, move on. The like, point indies, is to get out of the indies. Indies, right? And it, it kills me that it's like, well, we want this is like not wanting your local bar band. You know, I, no, it's complaining Tuesdays. that all the CBGBs bands eventually got big and they're yeah. not running in CBGBs yes. anymore. Well, CBGBs is a rat's nest in Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, they want to do other bigger venues than that. That's the point of a band. A, a, a group of four people do not come together to pool all of their efforts to achieve l below mediocrity. The whole, if you want to do that, you can usually do that just fine on your own. Yeah, like, it's not like, like, some of your super indies are making good money, but it's by charging fans and arm, like PWG. When it shows up every six months now, it, you know, sure, go pay 200 bucks for a front row seat to that and, you know, multiply that by, you know, 300 people or whatever. I, I, I get that, but, you know, it's not like these indies are making hand over fist money and then paying their talent, you know, a good amount of money to, to, to live necessarily. And it's, it's also like the, the other pushback was, well, great, they're going to want them to work their style. Okay, you know, I, I understand that the indie style is do a lot of high spots and, and you know, almost break your neck every other weekend. In front o over of cement, school. yeah, with limited matting. <laughs> you know, I think it, it can provide some gear with that. Like, look, my, my problem with the indies has always been it doesn't teach you how to be a television wrestler in terms of Hey, you have to buy into your character and you have to know how to get your character over with your mouth. And, well, and, and there's no promos on the indies. There's no, you know, doing really good angles on the indies necessarily. There's spot shows and stuff. And look, if they can provide a little bit of that off, off the road necessarily and teach them some of that in terms of the mentorship, in terms of coming into facilities and stuff, that'd be a good thing too. I don't think they are necessarily, but maybe your schools are teaching some of that. Okay, so like rather than rejecting the premise of the critics here, I'm going to go a different route on destroying this argument and embracing the premise. Let's suppose the WWE with this ID program is really doing this in a targeted way to compete against Tony Khan and essentially be putting his pass line bets down or WWE is putting their pass line bets down on all these different indie wrestlers to keep Tony Khan from getting access to them. Well, then isn't that a triumph of having a second major company in the market to improve things for the labor pool? Yes. Didn't AEW, by its existence, now essentially create the fruits of this? Isn't this a glorious day then? Uh, because maybe WWE would not have had the pressure to put down pass line bets on these indie guys if there wasn't an AEW out there potentially s snaking up these guys. Now I see Jeff grimacing as he's saying no, no, this. No, 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 no. I'm thinking of something else. I'm thinking of a, I have an oh. argument in my head that people were saying, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm fleshing it out right now. This is not oh, okay. what you're saying. Okay. Continue. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, but like, it, again, running with their argument, this is, this is market forces doing a good thing for laborers here. So I think whether you think WWE has malice in their hearts or just interest in finding the talent of tomorrow or a little of column A or column B, I think your reaction to it, however you see the pie being divvied up, can be basically the same. This is a good thing, and I'm glad that it's happening. The other, I mean, my argument is, well, Tony Khan isn't a man who doesn't have means. Why wasn't he f f 
fomenting these relationships on his own, and he was kind of, which makes the Nightmare Factory being on this list very interesting. I thought so, too. Because QT and Dustin, who are the trainers at the Nightmare Factory, uh, QT's back working at AEW, came out the, came out today, as a matter of fact, on Fightful, and Dustin Rhodes is a free agent. Despite the fact that he holds a couple of titles in in Ring of Honor, he holds both the tag titles and the six man titles with uh, with the Von Erich boys. Well, uh, that um, tells you that tells you how important the dub or ROH titles are. Well, we'll they get, really, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Hold, this is a company that, that matters. Hold that thought. Hold that thought because uh, next story you'll be very interested in. But uh, this also keeps Booker T, Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins, and Rikishi. In, in the fold, you know, as a pipeline, you know, giving them a couple of ducats to bring their kids up and, you know, give us first rights and, and other things. I, I see nothing wrong with any of this. AEW will get its talent. Don't don't worry about that, guys. A- AEW will be able to find its talent because there will be the anti-WWE types on the indies who, like, I don't want to do that corporate wrestling. Well, they had their opportunity with Ember Moon. She was a uh, Booker T product, right? Uh, yeah, but I mean, she had got, I mean, she's still with AEW in a way. Right. But well, in a way. Yes. Well, well, here, here's, here's where I'm going. I have to, to send out a team of Sherpas to find her, but well, yes. Well, maybe not for much longer, Chris, because Ring of Honor is negotiating a TV deal. Mm. Um, and my basic question is why? <laughs> not that, look, it, it's nice that you'll have another company in there. Tony Khan running two wrestling companies does nothing for me. I don't find Ring of Honor to be a brand name to bring back that has a huge amount of nostalgia to it. I'd sooner see Lucha Underground come back. Uh, Chris Jericho as champion is said to be part of this deal to help uh, get them over the hump. Much like Chris Jericho being AEW champ was hoping to get them over the hump there. Look, I, I, I am also just, I, look, and this is personal. I don't care for the Ring of Honor style. I don't, the, the handshakes, the, the code of honor, the Ring of Honor pure rules, you know, battles without honor tend to just be hardcore matches that you'd see elsewhere, even without the <laughs> code of honor. I, I, it's not something with a hook to it. It's just more good indie style wrestling that doesn't have a lot of heat to it to me that that's that's what ring about i mean look they they had yeah they had el generico and kevin steen they had the briscoes you know they they had good matches in there i just don't see this as a growth property and especially when you have a second television show on saturdays that isn't getting any viewers i don't get this at all tony Khan's got to stop doing WCW late era moves, like adding more and more TV when there's just no market for it. I don't see a rip roaring market for more AEW product, let alone ROH product. There's not a clamor well, for well, it like that. Let me posit this to you. Cause to me, ring of honor fit with its time and the market it, it, you know, it, we want, there was a, growth of independent wrestling where small guys could do matches up against the only game in town, which was WWE, right? which were just all jacked up steroid and those guys who were all over six foot giants and working 12 to 15 minute matches where ROH was specializing more in 20 to 30 ones. Right. And you know, much like ECW was a product of its place in time that has now just absolutely turned its dead horse into glue oh my nostalgia. god i mean like tna has actually worn out its welcome to be honest with you i i agree like this is this is another uh show that that just doesn't have um a place or time for itself like, anymore like if I was it's to not ask an you, alternative to anything chris give me the log line for tna wrestling what makes it different six-sided ring i mean that, that's about it are they, oh, they are back to a six-sided ring. i don't right know now. if they are or not i haven't watched yeah. it in so long. right no i, I right I, I i could tell you back in the day you know six-sided ring um but like that was one of the big problems with the dixie carta era tna is it just became wwf retirement home 
Yeah, it's not that I don't want more wrestling. It's that I want wrestling with a point. This is why <laughs> this is why I like Lucha Underground. Is it they was tried mean, stuff, yeah. It was meaningfully different. I, I know everyone will always be like Drago turned into a dragon, Aerostar turned into a time <laughs> traveler. I've I've heard this one a million times. I'm aware. I also I reviewed the show. We didn't but, say it was good at the end. We just said No, that no, but when it when, when it was good, it was good. Um Dario Queto is the most compelling GM character we've had in the last fifteen years. Yes. Between 2009 and 2024, Dario Cueto, to me, is the best GM we've ever had. Which is why a- MLW uses him. Right. So, clearly, they did stuff right there. Uh, and, and I think some of the cutscenes and some of the vignettes and stuff also worked. And, and that felt like an alternative to WWE's sports entertainment and yes. also new japan's sports presentation right. at the time we had right. sort of a spectrumatic presentation between a comic book world sports entertainment sports like presentation uh that's to me what makes something different you're right ring of honor tna what makes them energy wise different nothing no the answer to your question they they are really no energy wise different than aew they're, they're uh, se- and, and they're they're nominally energy wise different from WWE. Yeah, there seems to be the narrative that oh, wrestling without the WWE uh, presentation is what is wanted in the marketplace. I don't think that that's so true. Anymore. And and it's not. But you need more. You can't. You you know. It's it's like politics in a way. You can't just necessarily most years run on. You're not that. I, well, you I have to bring to, something on your own that you are. You know, I, 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 right. Thing. So there's there's that, and then the other kind of axiom with politics is sort of like fighting the last war. Yeah. Like that. This very much feels like they're running against the campaign. Uh, they're, they're running the campaign against WWE circa 2018 or 2020, which is very true. WWE's presentation around 2020 was floundering they went yes. through a bunch of different anchor hosts i mean the obviously the COVID era but i'm not before the COVID era like they they had a lot of bumpy and crappy shows i mean stuff that was consistently bad enough that jeff and i asked do we want to keep doing this for the next several weeks <laughs> and had like legitimate on air and uh, and more in-depth off-air meetings about that because it's it was that bad um but that's I, I, if I was running against WWE now in this pseudo election, right? That's not what I would be running against WWE on right now. A lot of the product is good. I mean, I might go after their baggy, crappy NXT that's no longer as good as it once was. Make NXT good again, I might say, in my campaign against WWE. But like going after their presentation full stop. No, I think Raw actually flows pretty well these days. I think SmackDown does too. I actually thought NXT was pretty good on Tuesday, but uh, we'll we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, it, it, there's this notion that, man, if Ring of Honor had just had more money, it, it would have been a hit. And I'm just like, okay, I, I don't think so, but go ahead. Because I think there's a certain expectation that crowds have, and you have to figure out a way to te- well, we can teach crowds about that with work rate. So I go, yeah, look at AEW then. Moving Cause... further, Kevin Steen became better when he became Kevin Owens. Becoming Kevin Owens actually helped put the finishing touches Ooh. on what is an already great wrestler. I I don't disagree, but I think you're gonna have some fighters on that one. And I will- oh no, they'll oh, say his his work diminished, but he's a better promo. He's a better uh, promo. He's yeah, a he's more presence. compelling. He's yeah, a, he's yes. a better pr- yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Um, yeah. <laughs> you'll love this. PW Insider reported Vince McMahon working on setting up an entertainment company. That was close to the situation told us, and we noted months ago a few times that McMahon was looking at starting a new non-wrestling business with the feeling that there was no way to do a successful startup wrestling business in the current environment for him. PW Insider reported that it was a company that would fund, develop, and produce movies and television shows. They reported Brad Bloom, the former WWE COO, was part of it. Bloom is a McMahon loyalist, and when he left WWE, the belief was that it was to work for McMahon. Kristen Prouty's name was also mentioned in the story. She was senior vice president of entertainment relations in WWE before being let go. Here's the money one. The general idea is that McMahon 
after he clears his name, will then announce the new business. I wouldn't bet on that first part, but Chris, your thoughts? I think he is making a porn business. Oh, I, 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 I think he's concluded there's no money left in wrestling. Why not live out the dream? He's already got the weird plastic surgery and the bizarre <laughs> mustache and dye job. He might as well become the porno director he looks like. <sighs> I'm thinking B movie distribution stuff that he was trying with WWE films and he got lucky with one movie kind of a oh thing. Oh my God. He does kind of look like a 1950s yes. B movie director now too. He's always wanted to be that, you know, that, that studio head chopping the cigar. All right, kids, show me what you got. You know, I have my leading lady, my leading man. I have my monster. Uh, Let's go uh, make an Ed Wood film. I you know, hate what they did to old Harvey Weinstein. He was a good guy. Yeah, I uh, I just love that all this betting is on, you know, once I get my name cleared, then people will want to work with me. And I'm just like, dude, you have this FBI investigation to get through, and then you have the Janelle Grant thing to get through. Uh, and again, it, it's I just this weird, me- <laughs> it's this weird, steady conflation that certain people, especially high-profile public-facing people, seem to have that guilty or not guilty in a court of law is the same thing as innocent or guilty in the court of public opinion. People, you might be ruled not guilty in court, but that doesn't mean that you then open up the doors to the court of public opinion with presumed innocence. Oh, he like, also, oh go ahead, sorry. I mean, we say innocent until proven guilty, but we mean that legalistically. Yes. We, we make up our minds about how we feel about people based on all the facts that come out along the way. Uh, there's this thought in his head that if I'm not doing something, I'm going to be dead. And it also conflicts with his thought that I, I can bring something necessary to this marketplace where it's just like, dude... Like I, it, it, it's the bravado of I ain't going out like that versus, versus I am such a talented person in the entertainment sphere that I can find another project to do and that that can be my legacy now. And uh, yeah, like, no, no, this this is legacy obsession. Uh, the yes. thing that it, it's he doesn't know how to like relax and mellow and I mean old, part of the, old people do that. Look at me, I'm young and vibrant. Well, and then part of the Mr. <laughs> McMahon documentary, right? Like, you see the clearly disjunctive relationship he has with his children and thus yes. his extended family. So, like, he's never going to be able to enjoy being a grandfather like that or being the respected head of the family who spent a lifetime building stuff and balancing building and loving, and, you know, all of these things. Like, he completely forsook his family on a singular quest for ultimate profitability and glory and stock market fortune. He had and- kids to basically screw them up because he was screwed up and to teach them. <laughs> you know, it's one yeah. of these things where it's like, I don't know if he ever really wanted kids. You know, it, it's one of those things where it's like, well, if I'm going to have kids, they're going to need to have to learn the, the hard way, like I did, type of a thing. And yeah. you're just like, you are such an ass, dude. I mean, <laughs> that, that, that's, the, that's the thing. I, I think I have a deeper, again, moving, getting a little older here and moving into different stations of, my, of life. I have a real deep disdain for this dude who chose to become a father and then really embrace the idea of not breaking the cycle, which he identifies and understands is bad. Like in that Mr. McMahon documentary, yes, he gets the bad things happen to him and he elected to continue the cycle. Uh, yes, you know, instead of protecting his children from the bad things, he decides, the, you know how I'm going to teach them how to swim. I'm just going to walk them out one day and, and surprise them by throwing them into the deep end of the pool. And let's see if, you know, if they drown, they drown. And oh, well, that's not my fault. They just didn't know how to swim. I don't want them to grow. I mean, like the trauma response here is all these horrible things that happened to me made me strong. I don't want them to grow up weak. Ipso facto, despite that I have the resources now 
to not have to have my kids grow up in a trailer or whatever. I want to make sure that they feel like shit. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's cuts, a bad okay. guy. I don't cuts, like this Vince McMahon. Cuts coming down late last night, yesterday. Um, Worded very interestingly, uh, have decided to leave, I think was the exact wording from any release they came out. But uh, Baron Corbin... His contract will not be renewed. It ends at the end of this year, so I believe that just means he's not going to be on television anymore. But both Tegan Knox and Indy Hartwell have been cut, and then following a 90-day thing, uh, will be free agents. Um, Somewhat surprising on Indy Hartwell, uh, because she's been back on TV lately with Candice LeRae, but that was always someone who I just thought was brought up too early, needed more training in there. Tegan Knox can never stay healthy, but she is still part of one of my favorite things in NXT, which was the turn by Dakota Kai on her during that war games, which was, I mean, that was Mauro Ronaldo's masterpiece, I think during that time. Um, and, uh, and Corbin's interesting. Cause I think Corbin is a guy who you're never going to hear from again, unless it's in a WWE ring. I think he's done with wrestling. I think he, everybody's like, Oh, he could go to TNA, go to new Japan. I go, I think he's a, uh, Hey, WWE is the pinnacle. Why would I want to go anywhere else? I have houses. I have money. Let me go do another career. I, I don't know. Do you disagree I, with you that? No, especially if he's got some money set aside, I could totally see this guy starting an auto body shop, you know, motorcycle uh, chop shop sort he of thing. He likes cooking. He likes barbecuing. I could see right. him opening a restaurant or something. Opening a re- You know what I mean? Like, he's got the money to do all that. I, I obviously... If his restaurant or other business needs money, he can go and do a spot show and, and you know basically do things to keep the restaurant running. Yeah, but he, I mean, he never worked the indies, and that's yeah. fine. I mean, but but he's not a product of the. I've all my main goal was to be in WWE. Nope, nope. He was he was a football player that they saw something in, and they brought him in. If you if you ever watched uh, was it it's either Breaking Ground or Proving Ground? I can't remember the old. Uh, the old documentary that they did on the old yeah. WWE network. I mean, this was a guy who was just like, look, I was on a practice squad. They told me wrestling might be a good idea. Cool. I'll make some money doing this, but I'm not one of your indie dar They, they turned that into part of his character at times to get heat. Was, you know, go back to the indies. He'd scream at people as he dumped them over the rope or whatever. And, you know, I appreciated it because to thine own self be true. He just, you know, I, I could see not wanting to work a high school gym of 30 people after you've been working 11,000 people crowds yeah your life i could see that being kind of depressing why not just go do something else and not live part of the broken culture of bitter veterans cutting shoot tapes and stuff like that i'm I'm cool with that i mean I, i wish i wish more people would just leave the business and then go do something else and never be heard from until like a Hall of Fame thing or one special comeback or something. I I I, no, I think Indy Indy loves wrestling. You know, she idolized Bailey, so Bailey kind of I mean said a goodbye on Instagram as well. But I you know she'll be she'll be in TNA or Impact or uh, yeah. I I mean I I I think in particular she might end up going to TNA and getting a TNA contract and then being back on NXT television. Super That's tough. possible too. Yeah, I can see that. And, and Tegan, I don't know her health anymore, but man, she just has two bad knees and it just never worked out. Uh, right. I, I, they, they might put her on a TNA contract. Like the, a new move for WWE might be, Hey, let's clear the books of this. Uh, we have a working relationship with TNA We'll cut your contract, send you over to TNA. You'll get a smaller deal, but it's still a deal, you know. I'll get through the rest of this news fairly quickly, and we'll see what happens on that. Uh, do, do you know who the Costco guys are, if I said that? Oh, the Costco guys are a uh, a constant source of reference here around, around the Casa Della Nova. Ah, and. Well, then- Oh. No, we're we're aware of the Costco guys. The Costco, one of the the dad tries to wrestle, um, or has, used to be uh, a worker. Um, yeah, used to be a worker. Yeah, AJ of the Costco guys will face QT Marshall in the pre-show of Full Gear. Uh, they were plugging this on uh, the ten twenty eight Tonight Show, which is which is actually more publicity than AEW has ever gotten, to be honest with you. But yes, they are the ones who talk about. 
how much they love Costco's chicken bake and double chunk chocolate cookies on TikTok. Oh, oh, will you at least say it the right way? Double chunk chocolate cookie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, let's let's snip that one for the Voices of Wrestling uh, shorts channel. Uh, and his son will be in his corner. We'll see if he can get up on the ring. Um, <laughs> uh, Tucker Knight. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Are we talking about the Rizzler? Or are we talking about the other one? I think both. I think. Uh, oh, the Rizzler's going to wrestle? No, he's not going to wrestle. He might get a cheap shot in there. I think. I, I, no, I, I think oh, it's the other let one. me I tell you what. The Rizzler's cheap shot's going to be devastating. I think it's the it's, older that, one. I, say what you will about this kid. He's just fun. The older one that they stuff full of chicken bakes and then. TikTok that's AJ. Him. Or TikTok, no, that's not yeah. AJ. No, uh, no, AJ is the dad, but yeah. I love these guys. Eric, the one who Eric. can't run a 40 for a crack because he's too busy doing stupid TikToks in Costco. Um. <laughs> his, his dad knows where his priorities are. And let me just tell you, watching those guys on Jimmy Fallon, that was like four of the most human humans I've ever seen on TV. Uh, between AJ and those kids who seem all very normal and well-adjusted, and Jimmy Fallon's anxious laughing to control the conversation and over-the-top laughter to also control the conversation and, and weird stilted demeanor. I, I love uh, these It guys. combines two of the things I hate. I hate families who become social media stars because my brother knows... Uh, my brother used to do a cappella with those guys, the, that family that did the Christmas jammies song that one time and became, like, started a media empire over it they're just uh, and and the other thing is people who bring their families to costco i'm trying to get in oh, i thought you were gonna say jimmy fallon well, no, hate... jimmy jimmy fallon's a close third but he doesn't yeah. i mean i don't i can avoid jimmy, him uh, i can, can avoid you, jimmy can fallon we, can we really avoid jimmy fallon he finds a way to ha 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 all stole his entire act from a friend of mine so <laughs> i don't like jimmy fallon at all but but families at Costco, I want the death penalty. I just I don't need six people running around waiting around for samples. I can't get my cart through. I can't get anything in any of the freezer cases because they're asking their mom to buy them. Get stay home. It's not a theme park. No, you know what? I'm gonna push <laughs> against this Hawkins as man of the people, Novi, hero of the public. You know how expensive it is to do anything with your your family. These days now, Hawkins, oh, screw it, you. it costs 60 gajillion dollars to go to Disneyland. It costs 20 gajillion dollars to go to the movie theaters. It costs like 25 gajillion dollars to go to any sort of amusement park. And I could get a Costco membership. I can pile in Nov. Nov one, Nov two, Nov three, Nov four, and little Novena into my my uh, Ford Transit van, and we can all go to the local Costco and, and have a me. good time. And, yeah, and bug you, little Novena's at going. Oh, Uncle Jeff, Uncle Jeff, thirty-eight, ten-year-olds in front of the damn rotisserie chicken thing. I just want to get a chicken, and these guys, Mom, yeah. can we get one of these? Oh, Uncle Jeffy, get me another sample, and that's that's see, that's fun. I can afford to do that, Jeff. I can't take him to Disneyland. Yeah. You know how much this podcast makes? You think I'm a, of I can't, no, I can't support a family of five on this podcast. Oh, God. Retirements and injuries. Tucker Knight has retired from pro wrestling. He, uh, former heavy machinery, worked about a dozen or so dates in Washington for Defy, but has not, but, uh, it's kind of been inactive since June 2023. Marco Stunt announcing his retirement yesterday on the Notes app through Twitter as well. Uh, injuries, TNA bound for glory, Vikingo and Chris Bay. Chris Bay having neck emergency neck surgery after taking a bump. And uh, there's a GoFundMe for him. Vikingo on the tapings did a top rope sky twister onto the floor, had a bad landing. I looked, think he blew out his knee. He had just come back from injury, which is why. Man, you know, it's almost like there's something to be said about uh, that style not necessarily being a good style for a major company that wants to build programs around you for months on end. Yeah, and then and they, they were hoping that AEW would be 
building something around him after that Omega match, and I'm just like, if he can't stay healthy, you can't. And then El Phantasmo announcing he has cancer. He's going to be stepping back for a little bit, and I love me some El Phantasmo. That dude's one of the better parts of New Japan, in my opinion. So prayers up to him. I feel bad for Tucker Knight. I always thought he got kind of a raw deal because, of course, Otis was, you know, the charismatic Chris Farley member of that team. But, like, there was that Elimination Chamber tag team thing where he just absolutely over-delivered, and I think he got cut shortly thereafter. I liked Heavy Machinery as a tag team. I like monster tag teams. I think we need more of them. I just, because this was Vince and there can only be one star in a tag team, I think he got the short shrift. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it, he got the short trip, and I think the only way he was ever going to survive is somehow figuring out a way to channel David Spade in a six foot five <laughs> frame. <laughs> I kind of want to see that <laughs> tall, big dude just suck it. Yeah, Otis. That, uh, That's okay. A I, actually, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of here for this. Now. Yeah, I'm yeah, here yeah. for this now. I'm here for six foot five, three hundred pound sarcastic David Spade looking at the shorter three hundred pound guy going, Yeah, that'll get over. <laughs> I was like, I'm here for the, the the problem with this heel is that he would get over as a face with the sarcastic yes. comments because they'd be too fucked. They'd too, be the voice too of the darn o- funny. Yeah. yeah, right. Like yeah, like the they'd be the subconscious voice of the audience. You're like, right. That beard does look Amish on Otis. What are we doing? <laughs> You're right. This guy is like 180 pounds and five foot two. Yes. <laughs> now that'll do it for the news. Let's go into the lazy river of wrestling criticism. We can go ice cold on Halloween Havoc or Crown Jewel today. Chris, where would you like to start? Uh, I didn't see Crown Jewel yet, so let's start. Let's start with uh, old Halloween Havoc. Uh, I feel like. I know you're into this week's NXT, and I'm not going to deny that the new women talent infused into NXT are uh, definitely all positive uh, developments, but I am so sick of Trick Williams and yes. being champion. I'm sick of Trick Williams being champion. That like That's actually the end of it. In this last match, he channeled a little bit of Booker T, and that at least made some coherence to some of his offense, but he is so below the standards of other NXT champions in the last decade that like it, you know, trick Williams reign as occasional NXT champion here, but we'll call this the trick era. Uh, I mean, it, it's such a drop down from Ilya Dragunov who was dragging everybody. Where is he go- gone? Where- <laughs> right. <laughs> who was TV dragging things. everybody to four star match minimums. You know, like old four-star general uh, Ilya Dragunov never missing uh, to Trick Williams who can't hit. I agree because I feel like Trick Williams has no natural charisma. I feel like it's all, all right, I'm a pro wrestler and I need to have that pro wrestling charisma. What can I do this It's Poochie charisma. Yes. Yeah, he feels like uh, you're kind of a boring dude. Well, we're going to put like a leather jacket on you and these Johnny Cool Guy glasses, and like again, I'm a guy who wears leather jackets and glasses. But like, it, but it, it's like the difference between you picking them out because you know yourself, and thus the outfit like reflects you on some level, versus me like I don't know grabbing Hawkins and just putting a leather jacket and glasses on Hawkins and being like, all right, go out there and be Jeff Cool. Yeah, it, to me, it, like he has natural charisma. You see it in interviews and stuff when it's off camera. I mean, when it's off NXT television, let him be himself. It, th- this is forced charisma, and it's just not working for me. Um, the only major thing I had about Halloween Havoc was again the women's tag. Was, uh, the women, the two tag matches were probably the best thing on the shows. Um, you know, and again, Javon Evans just. <laughs> Continues to get beat, but I, I really like. No, uh, and this Cedric Alexander tag team is terrible for him because it just keeps showing the gulf between how far away he is to even being Cedric Alexander. Yeah, I did like Julia and and, uh, and Stephanie Vacare versus Cora Jade and uh, and uh, Roxanne. That was I good that, stuff. That was, oh yeah, man! Yeah. And again, Stephanie's the money right now yeah. on that team. Yeah. She is so good. Uh, and I and just going into the weekly TV, which I thought. Again, NXT is doing a hell of a job with its women's division. 
for for whatever you want to say about how you know <laughs> Ridge Holland's in the main event picture of NXT. And the bully, no, the bully, the bully Ray wraparound on this show stunk. But yes. all the, I mean, they they actually have a true women's division with a undercard, middle card, yes. and upper card. Yes, with and like that, Wendy, yeah, and that that matters. Uh, the Wendy Chu uh, Tatum Paxley match over delivered. I uh, to dude, me, Tatum is good. Yeah, uh, she, people, uh, crappy she's, gimmick. Uh, Good wrestler, way underrated wrestler. And yeah, Wendy, yeah, and Wendy Chu is game for everything. That that's yeah. why I love her so much. She she's she's one of those people where it's like, okay, funny, spooky, serious, whatever. I'll put you in there. That ten woman match on Wednesday is gonna slap. I think I I, I am here for that. I mean, and adding and bringing Jordan Grace back into the fall fold when they're they're just gonna sign her away when she's a free agent. But you know her, Julia, um. Zelina, I mean, it's just an the Zelina debut worked on Halloween Havoc and and on on the show afterwards. They just they they know what they're doing with their presentation. They they have an abundance of talent over there. And and look, Jasmine Nix is going to take the fall, and that's fine because the other four are really good on that other heel team too. So I I am looking forward to that. The ECW nostalgia. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be next. I think it's gonna be someone else to set up another angle. Okay, somebody, yeah, yeah somebody yeah. beats, uh, somebody that, pins beats uh, Fallon, Fallon to yep. for the for yep. that Fallon. secondary, but it might yep. be Zelina and Fallon. Yeah, because I mean, she she came in like a like a dynamite and 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 did that, but uh, other than that, you know, it was uh, you know, it was it was standard stuff. <laughs> I'm still kind of laughing because the one thing in the women's division I don't want to talk about is. Uh, is a Nikita Lyons. <laughs> well, I mean, I like that but she's Nikita's, fine. I like that she's going heel. Uh, Kalani Jordan uh, stopping oh, the mayor. Mayor Kalani initially stopping Rizzo from attacking Nikita, <laughs> and then deciding, no, this is just and good. Go ahead yes. and do it. I'll even push I, you. you. Unfortunately, I start thinking of you when I'm watching these segments and going, "There it is. She's a heel." She's, She's a right again. <laughs> yeah, right now. First, she 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 makes herself moral arbiter, Jeff. Yes. Little, Dud, little Miss Dudley do right over here, and then when when she decides, it, when she decides to insert herself, you know, like have you ever seen the trolley problem? Are you familiar with the trolley problem in philosophy, Jeff? Have you ever heard of trolleys? Yes. Um, and, and they and they kill people. All right. So this is like the trolley problem is set up. And you don't even have to participate in it. And Kalani Jordan walks in and is like, oh, cool, a lever. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is by far my favorite gimmick of yours. It really mm-hmm. is. Just because it's one of those things where it's like, it's such an off the beaten path thing that it's eventually going to come true. <laughs> somebody's going to listen to this or somebody's going to be told about this. It's like, hey. Maybe she's a really a secret heel. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to having my Bobby Heenan moment, like when Hogan finally turned heel and he was right all along. Uh, let me just let me talk a little bit about uh, Crown Jewel real quick, because it actually it it was an inoffensive show. It was cromulent, as we like as the kids like to say. It did what it was supposed to do. Was it a Saudi Arabian WrestleMania? By no means. Uh, also on these shows in Riyadh, they don't have to do as much PR as they have to do in Jeddah. Apparently in Jeddah, they always have to talk about how great Jeddah is. In Riyadh, they never have to mention Saudi Arabia all that much. So it's always different. But uh, here's what I have uh, ascertained. Is that WWE has finally learned how to book this place. And they no longer need to listen to people who were telling them, hey, we want old eighties wrestlers, or we want like the greatest Royal rumble ever. They are just booking their stuff and it is killing in front of this crowd. And that comes from just plain good old fashioned audience. Um, Pavlovian conditioning. You know, no, you know what else it is now? They are really engaging with the show on TV in a meaningful way too. Yes. So they're not, they're not, they, 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 because they're no longer doing. Let's bring in Shawn Michaels and H or Triple H to come in there and have a crap match in front yes. of people. Now we're past that. So now we're having Gunther versus Cody Rhodes, 
And we can spend several weeks on television doing that. And you know who sees that? All the customers over in Saudi Arabia who are going to be coming to this show. We don't have to have Saudi Arabian comedians doing special spots. Look, Mansoor got has a job now in wrestling because of these things, but no more of that stuff. This is just a pure WWE bridge show to Survivor Series. And things that are interesting... Uh, I believe there was some controversy with booking Sami Zayn originally because he was Syrian. Sami Zayn is now a huge baby face that they yeah. want to pop for. And that happened in the bloodline versus bloodline match. Right guy won uh, solo after a couple of spikes pinned Roman reigns because they couldn't communicate as well with the Usos anymore. And, uh, and, and they're playing up the distrust of Sammy angle straight from the TV, but Sami Zayn is still there. The kid's favorite out there. Uh, the four-way for the women's tag title was better than it had any right to be. Lash Legend and Jakara Jackson got NXT chance in Saudi Arabia, and they did fine for themselves. Lash Legend is Lash Legend's better than uh, than Jade Cargill. And yeah, just uh, as and, tall, and yeah. it's it's one of those. And La, and Lash and Jaka, and Lash and Jakara uh, held their own. Here they they they. I mean, look, there was there was a little bit of nerves there. Don't get me wrong, but Jakara's always game to like take risks. Like she's not afraid uh, to to do like kind of a um, n- n- risky move. Yeah, no, and she yeah. did a few of those here. Kyrie yeah. and Eo are, of course, always just solid and good, nowhere to be. And Ch- <laughs> Chelsea and Piper <laughs> are the glue that hold this match together because Chelsea Green is such an amazing flake throughout this entire thing. And it, but she's still, you know, she still has some threat to her. She's not just being comedy. She's doing everything. And this match worked and it got over with this crowd. Chris, there was a Joe Hendry, Hendry sign in the, in the crowd. Well, that's good. Cause I've actually been worried about Joe Hendry's kind of future relaunch. Come, <laughs> come. No, I'm, I'm not even joking. I think that like the way that they handled him was so bad towards the end of NXT like we didn't we got into the suffering succotash zone yeah. with Ethan take off some clothes or Ethan put on some clothes uh Seth and Bronson Reed was really really good um and I think the ending was fine it, it it's it's a continue the story kind of end but it took three curb stomps from various heights and on various things to get Bronson Reed down and then Bronson Reed got back up after about two minutes after taking after taking a curb stomp from the from the from the top rope from Rollins, and he's just up there bleeding, looking like a badass, saying, "I'm gonna come back after you." Uh, Liv and Nia was just it was a schmoz because of all the outside interference by both heel groups, um, and Tiffy threatening to cash in, and she doesn't cash in, and everybody's mad at her for cashing it, trying to cash in, and. And, and, you know, live you know, doms out there. I, I did like the way they handled the go home on SmackDown though, where, where Tiffy asks, so if I win your belt, does Dom come with me? And Dom just kind of looks and thinks about it for a moment then looks at Liv and goes, nah, she's, she's lying. <laughs> Dom is such a great scumbag in this role. Uh, LA Knight, Andrade, and Carmelo was, you know, Andrade and Carmelo could do this in their sleep and they're fantastic. Knight was cromulent and the, the ending was clever. It was, you know, the... Uh, uh, what what's the three letter name of his his finisher? I forget what it is. It's oh the BT blunt force trauma B BFT yeah. yeah. But it was like in in it had all three guys doing a move, but it was really like a, a BFT on both of them. It was it was fine. La Knight didn't offend anybody, and then Cody and Gunther was okay. Um, I wouldn't call it a great match, but it was good. It was solid. Crowd was uh crowd was into it no matter what happened, but. Uh, yeah, uh, Gunther tried to go for a sleeper after a uh, a Cody Cutter off the ropes catches him, but uh, he turns the sleeper then into the pinfall type move, the heart, the Bret Hart Roddy Piper finish. Okay. Um, af- after Gunther had, had had sworn he was going to beat Cody with a sleeper, he ends up putting the sleeper on, but it ends up uh, leading to his demise, which is fine. And then uh, then they're out of there. Although, look, it, it look it was slow. The entrances took forever, but you know it wasn't. It didn't feel like it dragged. It was a fine show, but it's. But there's nothing really outstanding worth going to look at for your way. The, I'd I'd recommend the watching the Bloodline because it it enhances the main event angle going into Survivor Series, and I'd watch the four way. But other than that, uh, 
you know, it, it's it's hit or miss. Maybe Bron- maybe you'd like Bronson Reed and Rollins a little bit. Yeah, I, th- I think I would. Yeah, that sounds fair. Uh, your turn, sir. Go somewhere for me. Man, okay. Um, I think I already hit on this a little bit here, but uh, once again, Javon Evans took a big loss here in a high-profile situation on NXT against Nathan Frazier and Axiom, who continue to have really good chemistry. Like, Frazier and Axiom really kind of out kicking their coverage uh you know like definitely the sum is more than the individual parts they they have they have a gimmick here yes. with these two guys they 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 have a re- it's an interesting and subtle and cool gimmick and now what what is what in your mind is their gimmick their gimmick is that they're always a little bit um out of sync with one another okay. however they they in, interject discord among whatever team goes up yes. against them. Yes. The, the, yeah, the, like the, they they just have this like sort of uncanny ability to create fractures inside of a team and expose fractures inside of a team. It, so while you're looking in and staring at their fractures, they're actually revealing all of yours and you don't even see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And like, this has been the story a number of times. No, and, they are always on the verge of breaking up. And then everybody who faces them ends up breaking up. And, and, and right. they've even alluded to this. So at this point, I don't feel like I'm really you know, taking massive steps here with this analysis of the story. I like, I like the story. It's fun. Um, and I, again, I, as I mentioned earlier, I think Cedric Alexander kind of ran circles around Javon Evans in this match. Uh, they There were a couple of times where they're doing the mirroring moves, right? Javon would do it first, and then Cedric would do it, and Cedric just looks better. I'm going to go over to AEW for a moment. Um, oh, boy. Young Bucks and Private Party. I hate the Young Bucks right now. I hate them. Their story being the emotional fulcrum of... <laughs> of what should have been private party's crowning moment in wrestling drove me up the wall Wednesday night when I did the dynamite show. No, no, I, I, I hated everything about the Bucks storyline on Wednesday night, but the moment I hated the most Jeff was Christopher Daniels on his knees, like Dixie Carter pleading with the young bucks to come back and save the company using his position of authority that he has, need I remind you, as a bulwark against the Young Bucks and their incompetence. If there is one person who should be the last to be won over by the change of heart of the Young Bucks, it's Christopher effing Daniels because Tony Khan gave Chris Daniels a suit and tie job after Chris Daniels lost his regular job because of the young bucks so the one person who should not trust them at all should be chris <laughs> daniels the last to finally come around on them should be chris daniels and it says like you can't do this what are you gonna do someone needs to save us chris you were supposed to be there to save us from them so you're telling me now that you've been crap at this this whole time in addition to that so the young bucks at was it Wrestle Dream? Cut this promo on Private Party that they suck and they haven't done anything in five years. <laughs> so we have this match. They they allude to Kenny Omega by doing a couple of Omega's moves. They get beat by Private Party, which I thought was, they they did a couple of interesting things in the like I liked the match. I liked the although. A guy getting hit with a ring bell shouldn't be really coming to all that quickly, but again, they then offset it with the spike or with the pile, the tombstone pile driver up at the top of the ramp. So you didn't know which guy was going to fail the team. I liked that that feeling of, oh god, here we go. One of them's gonna gonna lose, and then the other one's gonna turn on him, type of a thing. I liked that they did that. Problem was, okay, private party wins. Private Party should have just rolled out with the belts, celebrated into the crowd, cheering. They have their moment. Instead, we have to go to the Young Bucks shaking their hands, saying, good game, everybody, because this is a Ring of Honor cosplay federation, when it didn't matter 
because the Bucks don't respect private party. They said they didn't respect private party. Oh, but now they do. And then they go running into the back to clear out because they're spooked for some reason, even though we don't know why they're spooked. Supposedly it's Moxley. Have Moxley and company gone after them? Has there been any setup for them going after the Young Bucks? No, there is not. There's just a feeling of paranoia that they must pack all their things and <laughs> and have Brandon Cutler shredding documents for some reason. Right, they're baby faces, right? Like, we want the guys who are shredding documents furiously in the back to come around and save us. I, I, I mean, Jeff... They, they're like, there's what, like 10 minutes between them shredding documents in the back as, as all of our favorite baby faces do. You remember when Brett, the hitman heart <laughs> <laughs> had bank records. He needed to get rid of real quickly. Yeah, because he was actually getting rid of knocking. heart. Okay. The heart foundation at one point the was, <laughs> it was a 501 C three. It was company. actually a 501 C three. They got into some trouble. <laughs> Uh, leading into their feud with the Generation X, we see <laughs> Owen going to the back, and him as furiously shredding all the documents. You know, when the nations of domination oh. have diplomatic immunity everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I just, it's just, it's that, and then Brandon Cutler is the emotional fulcrum for which I am supposed to right. care whether this or not... This guy who is dressed like a total a-hole looks like a doofus. Moxley and has Chris Daniels in a noogie. In a headlock, just going, oh, just stay here. Not not hurting Christopher Daniels. And Daniels is not even really trying. No, he's not. And, and he's a- not really threatening repercussions. I mean, the, I just ballless Chris Daniels here drove me insane. Because he <laughs> should be threatening, he should be threatening suspensions at all these guys. You who, know what I mean? Who cares if Brandon Cutler gets hurt? Right. And all of this is to set up then the Bucks coming back with Omega to be heroes. What? what okay cool uh your turn go somewhere on, on uh, no I, I i mean i i could stay here on, on this on this aew thing um right. let's talk about let's talk about what the hell with camille because <laughs> why are you beating camille this is such an obvious match where you just bring this to a non-finish yes you have you have CEO get in the ring and hit her in the head with it and she scolds Camille for not getting the job done but you don't beat Camille here that defeats the whole purpose of this that and you don't break them up now unless you're uh, see I think they're bailing on this to put Mercedes in a stable and I just or or Camille I don't know which one but one of these are going with MVP I think and I think it's dumb it, it, it's like what are you doing this is this is an obvious DQ place where it's like they're fighting and then she comes in to attack and the two of them double team them. That that that's 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 the story. But but also, you know, you have Tony work rate. Uh, people don't like these DQs. People don't like that. We need we need to have a good match with a solid finish. And so, yeah, we need decisive fin- decisive finishes are no more rewarding than non finishes if they're stupid. Yes. See also Adam Cole and Buddy Matthews, where the whole story is he's been out for two years, but he hurt his foot again. And then he gets, he gets, <laughs> he's getting escorted by a doctor who doesn't think he can continue. Adam Cole doesn't think he can continue. And then Buddy Murphy, who again, Ring of Honor, we have to shake hands after saying that he's a bitch. <laughs> Calls out Adam Cole's manhood. Cole comes down and beats him. <laughs> Just this company. And Adam Cole is not a sympathetic baby face. No. Ever. No, and, and this this whole faction thing is stupid, too, because yes. I think everyone's very ahead. No one's going to believe that the no one wants the Undisputed Era to come back together like this. No one's going to believe that the Undisputed Kingdom, I said Undisputed Era, whatever. Well, no Kyle O'Reilly is coming to one of these factions. I just don't know which one it is. So that'll be boring and vanilla, too. I, right? I, I mean, <laughs> maybe 
<laughs> maybe you – well, you, you never know. You might get cool Kyle, and that guy's fun uh, like Poochie. See, it's, I think it's going to be Kyle and Adam Cole versus Roderick Strong, Strong in the Kingdom. In the kingdom. Yeah, I and agree. And God knows that's a, that's a main event on Ring of Honor 2016. I know. Maybe. Right. Maybe. I just, uh, it's just like, I, okay. Adam Cole's baby facing stinks. Yes. I also don't understand. I, I There's a lot of problems with the retcon around here of like, he became this Mondo heel. <laughs> I became the devil to make MJF look bad. And now MJF's the bad guy. And I'm right. the good guy. And right. we all just know he's a prick. So I became a bigger prick to prove that he was a prick. But he turns out to still be a bigger prick. And I'm still hanging out with these three other pricks. who are probably going to turn out to be pricks as well when they turn on me so that Roddy can get a match with the prick. Right. Uh, it, it, it's, 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 it's like, God, man, why, why don't I want to see more of this crap? Oh, I can't. Like, Adam Cole is the most. Adam Cole is a heel. He's a cool heel, but he's a heel nevertheless. So let's just keep him as a like he he has his one cocky promo. I'm Adam Cole, baby. You know he does his sing along, but I mean he doesn't have much in terms of the other any other promo other than how good he is. And it's just it's one of those things where it's like I understand people really liked him and his act was really good in both Ring of Honor and and NXT. But now that I've been watching it for six or seven years and it hasn't evolved anything. I I can't anymore. And and what is the House of Black doing, by the way? Because I I don't know if their heels are baby faces either. Right. I I, I mean guy Black who should have probably kicked Buddy's head off for failing. For and, and the then House we, of Black. Then we get like into what is the point of BCC's takeover? What yes. are they taking over? What what are they doing this? At this point, the entire locker room is banded together. <laughs> this. This presumes, right, that they know why they've done that. Yeah. Imagine, like, you just start assembling into a group of fifteen people, and you're just standing someplace. Don't call it work. Uh, let, let, let's let's call it like anything else. Oh, no, like, uh, an angry mob, which is right, like, you know, right? Yeah, okay, pitch, but like all and, and torches. Oh, there are people yeah, with we have pitchforks and torches. That's we need pitchforks and torches too. Yeah. Doctor Frankenstein over. has a monster. Yes. We all agree on this. Yes. That's why we've all assembled with the pitchforks and torches. Um, th there's not really a we need to do something about these guys cuz sort of thing. No. If it, right now, it kind of <laughs> makes the BCC seem like the underdogs, the arrogant underdogs. Why like, is Orange Cassidy trying to save Wheeler Yuta? Also true. <laughs> I also... Also, the the heartfelt agony of Wheeler Yuta sucks, and we should have abandoned <laughs> ship on this angle. Once he crosses the line on Danielson, it's over. It's over. You you cannot will he or won't he with this guy anymore. Yeah, there's no there's no. It's like oh, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna break the neck of the guy who took out Brian Danielson. I gotta go stop that because that's a bridge too far. What? No, let him do it. That's one less member of the BCC. <laughs> Dope. Uh, things I liked in AEW. Yeah, the Lashley debut was good. I think he has no place in AEW, but I thought the debut was good. <laughs> oh, no, he does as their champion because yes. he actually has the physique and build of a champion. Yes, he is what American pro wrestling fans <laughs> look at as a champion. And you know what AEW's... Uh, Mission statement is wrestlers who don't look like pro wrestlers who do great matches. Yeah. And honestly, like he can then have a bunch of entertaining matches with some of the monsters of that company. Like a Brian Cage can like fly around and Lashley can catch him and toss Cage, him. Cage Lashley would be yeah. fun. Yeah. Lashley uh, murder hawk monster. Yeah. Lashley Wardlow. Lashley Will Hobbs. I'm here for all of these. Yeah, just, let's, let's just just but but we be, can't because we have to give thirty minutes to, to top flight versus private party or something. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give some love to Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho, and and here's why: not necessarily what he does, but he knows he takes every criticism he's getting online because he is way too far online. Yeah, and he works it into his promos to be an inside the park home run. 
that promo where he he works in being the ROH champion, you know, to 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 elevate its its uh it it its Q rating or whatever, much like he was the champion for AEW. Because a lot of people are still mad he was the first AEW champion. We have that. The Dave Meltzer four stars line is going to tweak a lot of people. Did that. The uh, th- There were a couple other lines in there. I can't remember offhand because I don't have the promo in front of me. But I'm just like, he listens. Oh, the people who think he gets too much TV time works that in there. He just, he tweaks everybody who's mad at him. And then he smiles and says, bye, guys. And it's just, I've watched this and I go, all right, I hate him, but I can't hate him because he's so good at knowing how to work the people who watch AEW who don't like him because he's in AEW. Okay, isn't he, like, in a weird way, one of the most kind of complicated people to understand in terms of his level of awareness? Because there are times where he's madly aware like this, right? And then we cut to him singing Rage Against the Machines, Killing in the Name of. With and it, yes. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and if there's... One song that Chris Jericho really doesn't have <laughs> a lot of identity with. It's the lyrics to "Killing in the Name of." Like this is this you is know what not, he needs to do. This yep. is not his "Rage Against the Machine" song. You no, know, he needs, it, but he's on, radio might be a little bit better of a choice. He's on the right track though, because what he needs to do is he needs to take his band Fozzy and combine them with Swerve's rap career and his friends, and do a Judgment Night remake of that album oh, oh yeah, the ice cubes uh metal band well n- well well remember what the, the whole rice tea well the whole point of that album was you took a bunch of hip-hop acts and you took a bunch of hard metal acts and they did a bunch of songs like you had living color and run dmc you had the booyah tribe and faith no more y- you know there you go there there's some aew cross promotion you could do that i think would be good just just do one album like Judgment Night, and then 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 get get all that music stuff out of your system so you can be wrestlers again. Oh, I I, I like it when Jericho gets that music stuff out of his system because he's been making dad rock since he was like in his late twenties. Oh, Fozzy is not a good band to me, but the I I never ne- they haven't been good to me since he stopped doing just covers of of, 80 of, of Fozzy Osbourne. Yeah, yeah Fozzy Osbourne. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, right, exactly. Like, yeah, like when it was. Just just 80s hair metal covers and he was yes. doing that for shits and giggles i thought that was great that's fun every once it became a real band i hate it yeah once he started writing real music then it then jumped the yeah. uh, i have nothing else on the lazy river what do you have i uh i ain't got nothing either baby oh, i think a that's quick, a quick one uh i love on raw they're doing the xavier woods kofi kingston arguing thing in front of the tour bus and Miz goes to the bus and Uncle Howdy's there and just in the background he gets kidnapped. I love that they do those little things in the background. Right. Because, and then they did and then the, the the keeper on this is for for social media, I think. I don't think this made TV. I'm I'm I may be misremembering, but Scarlet goes up to uh Carrie and Cross in a hotel room. And he's like, We have to save Miz. <laughs> Carrie Cross goes, How long he's been gone? About 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> there's, no need to, there's no need to be in a hurry. He's dead. We can't do anything about this now. It's beyond our bail. I just, I laughed my ass off watching that one. I go, that should have made TV. I'm so mad it didn't. But yeah, I like the little layers in certain scenes. Go ahead. I'm sorry for that. I, I, I like I like Karrion Cross a lot. I, I, I think that he has found something. And, and what I was kind of getting back to is this notion that like, the criticism of WWE television right now is not that people hate every single aspect of it. There's lots of vignettes and lots of scenes and lots of little nuances that they have made since the departure of Vince here over the last 18 months that are all welcome additions. References to things that are happening next week, things happening in the background that make you feel rewarded for paying attention. Um, Little plot beats and sometimes seeds planted and stuff like that. That's all I got. Vader Club from Madison Square Garden, the first time Arn and Tully ever did Madison Square Garden. This was available originally on a uh, Shawn Michaels DVD set. 
uh, that came out, but I don't believe it was ever available. I never, I don't think it got broadcast on primetime wrestling, although other matches at night did. But this is, uh, this is the Brainbusters versus the Rockers from January 1989. And the best way I could describe this look, when the Rockers would face uh, Diamond and Tanaka, they were doing their match from the AWA for the most part. That was, that was their AWA match. Arn and Tully come in, they work the road with these guys, and they teach them how to be the Rock and Roll Express. This was straight out of Jim Crockett Promotions 1988, which was kind of amazing to see in a WWF ring of sorts. And it's even and Ron Trongard and uh, Sir Alfred, <laughs> Alfred Hayes, I have that name right, Alfred Hayes or Albert Hayes? I can't remember. Uh, uh, Alfred. Lord Al- Alfred Hayes, not hey, Sir Alfred Hayes. Hayes. That's yeah. what's throwing me out. Lord Alfred Hayes are absolutely gobsmacked by how good Arnett and Tully are in this match. Um, yeah, this is this is a Jim Crockett match in in the WWF, and this is also why Brett and Jim Neidhart desperately wanted to work with them after, after this. Uh, you know, just basic tag team wrestling, cut off the baby face, double team him at times, let him come in, get shine on both guys, take a powder outside the ring, psychology, etc. cetera. Shawn Michaels says of this match, and he said it in the, cause I remember when I rented this, cause I wanted to watch this match. He says, I never knew ring psychology until I got into a ring with Tully Blanchard, where everything matters in that ring at that time every little thing you do every facial expression every punch i uh, just the way they're working the shoulder hold so the yes. rockers have a shoulder hold on tully and he tries to make a tag to Arn. like he makes the the foot desperation spot to arn and gets pulled away from it I, and i love that the referee is saying that you can't tag the foot to get in the ring as well it's also part of the uh, part of the psychology here because like there's so many matches now where they just let that go or if you tag any body part you can come into the ring they're actually using the rules here to help with the psychology i i hadn't watched this match in a long long time uh this is why i do vader club chris this is this is this is my uh comfort zone this is where i have a cigarette and go man that was good how was it for you <laughs> yeah no well and then Janetti always remains this very uh frustrating presence because like He's good. Yes. Yeah, like M- Marty Marty at this point I would say is as complete as Sean. He's more I'm, complete than Sean I'd even yeah, say. Yeah, 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 I I I was I was just holding back a little bit, but I feel like Marty's agility is a little bit better. I think his super kick looks a little bit better at this point. Um like Marty's got a lot of things going for him. Yeah, and and you know, it's mostly drugs and alcohol that does his. Him. Uh the the thing about Marty is you watch when, after he gets cut from WWF, he has a very odd run where he'll go to, I think he did a couple of shots in ECW. He yeah, go, in WCW he did a, I was getting to WCW. He did WCW where he was like in the mix where I, I believe he even tagged with like Ricky Morton at one point do, doing a tag team, or one of the members of the Fantastics. And so he was in that kind of weird tag team mix in the early to mid 90s and and, you know he had a couple of really good matches it was this was his redemption i'm trying to get back into the company thing and they went back to wwf and just (laughs) blew it again but uh no this is just good old-fashioned 1980s tag team style wrestling it's on youtube ron trongard is inoffensive as a play-by-play guy he's not i thought it was vince at first and I was like, well, Vince with a cold or something, but it wasn't because Vince would usually do the Madison Square Garden shows. But um, yeah, I I just adore this match so much. I, I think it's better. I think it's actually better than some of their Crockett stuff too. Like against, like don't get me wrong, I love I love a good Barry Luger versus Arn and Tully match, but they don't move like the Rockers do. Like the Rockers were bumping for him, and Arn and Tully are moving around for them oh. as well that that that's the thing you know whenever we do these i always will have the match on too because it just allows me to like jar my memory w- what i am noticing as i'm watching this again is that arn and tully just are moving a step or two faster than they normally move in a lot of these matches taking a few more chances a little bit more bumping Tully tully's a very he he occupies a lot of space in the ring. You know what I mean? Like you wouldn't think of Tully as a moves around guy. Right. 
But but he is, and so is Arn. He's sneaky fast, is what yes. he is. Tully is, yeah. and he's and mobile. he's very good. Mobile. And he's mobile, and he and he gets and he's crisp with his moves, and that's that's what made that team so good. When they always talk about like Arn was the power guy and Tully was the technical guy. Look, Arn's great, but Tully's technical skills are sneaky good because you don't even notice them sometimes because he's such a jerk. And that's the other thing I love is like, if if they're getting beat on or whatever, they roll out of the ring and they're frustrated and it affects them. And then the crowd gets on them for being frustrated because that's what you're supposed to do with heels. You don't see a lot of that anymore. Yeah. It it allows the six man to get in it, right? Like the six man's messing with the heels head. Like, like you, you, you take a, like now you take a powder so that the baby face can take a dive on you as opposed to really going, Hey, I'm frustrated. We had a plan because that was also cave. Okay. You, you plan for these tag matches and you know, what's your strategy going in, et cetera. It really helps with the entire world you're trying to create in here. I, again, well, it's an engagement thing too. I think you, you sort of nailed it here. If the baby face takes a dive on you, yeah, the crowd pops because they saw something exciting. When the heels are outside and they're looking around trying to get a clue, trying to find a clue, and the crowd is now the crowd has an opportunity to scream at them more yes. and get in their head. Yes, like and, one and, is and, trying to calm down the other and say, "Hey," and he's just frustrated, getting angry, and the crowd's going, "Yeah, you suck!" You know, it, it it makes it such a much more enjoyable experience to watch. Yeah, and, and it keeps the crowd more engaged. I, like, it just gives them more of a reason to be yelling at the like heels. that stupid thing Cornet and the Midnight Express would do. Like Bobby. <laughs> Bobby would come in and give Jim a big hug and Cornette yeah. would have to have to console him by stroking his hair like a puppy or something. And it always, you know, yeah, sure. Oh. He got the homophobic heat on, on him, but it's but still, it was also it's funny. still heat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chris will pick something for next week, but I think we can cut it off there. This has been shake them ropes. You can follow me at crap game 13 on X, or you can just follow the show at shake them ropes. All one word. Chris is on Instagram at D O C T O R underscore. No, we are part of voices of wrestling podcasting network, a whole bunch of wrestling podcasts for any kind of niche thing. If we ain't your thing, we should be, but if we're not, <laughs> For many, we're not, apparently. For many, we're not, apparently. But, you know, you have the flagship. We have the Good Bad Hungry. We have the Gentleman's Wrestling Podcast. We have Five Star Match Game. If you like game shows, get the super feed. Listen to us all because we cover just about everything. I also do a show over on Fight Game Media on Wednesday nights with Paul Fontaine of Wrestling Observer. It's called The Dynamite Show. Very original. We go live on YouTube about 20 minutes after the show goes off the air. It drops into your pod catchers for free the next day if you can only listen to just the audio doing a thorough deconstruction of AEW Dynamite and the news of the week surrounding AEW. Chris is a musician. Chris teaches guitar. Chris plays music, eats music, sleeps music, drinks music. He's going to tell you about his plugs now. Yeah. Uh, come and learn music lessons from me, your pal, Chris Novembrino. Message me on the Instagram, D-O-C-T-O-R underscore N-O-V. Or you can email me, Chris Novembrino at gmail.com. And also, please go and check out my Spotify, which is my name, Chris Novembrino, on Spotify. Go and listen to some of the groovy tunes. There will be more out in the future. Set your clock back an hour today, kids. Enjoy the extra hour of sleep, unless you're in Arizona and Indiana. Mm.